can confirm that it is related to an anti-satellite capability that Russia is developing. Russia is developing an anti-satellite weapon that is a cause for concern for the United States but poses no direct threat to people on Earth, the White House said on Thursday. The United States is now reaching out to Moscow over the weapon, whose existence was confirmed after lawmakers warned of an unspecified but serious threat to national security. Moscow denied the malicious and unfounded claims, describing them as a White House ploy to try to pass a multi-billion dollar Ukrainian war aid package stalled in Congress. But what would it mean if Russia used nuclear warheads to destroy U.S. satellites? A common U.S. citizen's electrical and water systems could completely fail. Aviation, rail and car traffic could come to a halt. Their cell phones could stop working. These are among the reasons why there was alarm this week over reports that Russia may be pursuing nuclear weapons in space. The White House has said the danger isn't imminent. But reports of the new anti-satellite weapon build on long-standing worries about space threats from Russia and China. So much of the country's infrastructure is now dependent on US satellite communications and those satellites have become increasingly vulnerable. It would also not be the first time a nuclear warhead has been detonated in space or the only capability China and Russia are pursuing to disable or destroy a US satellite. This could mean a new era of space wars and not the kind India was keen on. Although India also tested in 2019, but now India has begun a new era of space exploration and this conversion of the unmanned territory into a war zone is only going to be detrimental to our efforts. Anyway, here's a look at what happened in the past. Why Russia may be pursuing a nuclear weapon for space now and what the US is doing about all the space threats it faces. Let's first talk about Starfish Prime and Project K. Both Russia and the US have detonated nuclear warheads in space. In the 1960s, little was known about how the relatively new weapons of mass destruction would act in the Earth's atmosphere. Both countries experimented to find out. The Soviet tests were called Project K and took place from 1961 to 1962. The US conducted 11 tests of its own and the largest and first successful test was known as Starfish Prime. Starfish Prime launched in July 1962 when the US sent up a 1.4 megaton thermonuclear warhead on a Thor missile and detonated it about 250 miles or 400 kilometers above the Earth. The missile was launched about 800 miles or 1300 kilometers from Hawaii, but the effects from the tests were seen around the equator. According to a 1982 Department of Defense report on the tests, the large amount of energy released at such a high altitude by the detonation caused widespread auroras throughout the Pacific. The blast disabled several satellites, including a British uh, satellite named Ariel, as radioactive particles from the outburst came in contact with them. Radio systems and the electrical grid on Hawaii were temporarily knocked out. The debris left satellites in its path completely malfunctioning. When the former Soviet Union conducted its own test as part of Project K, it did so at a slightly lower orbit and fried systems on the ground, including underground cables and a power plant. The US and the Soviet Union signed a nuclear test ban treaty a year later in 1963, which prohibited further testing of nuclear weapons in space. White House National Security Spokesperson John Kirby declined to say on Thursday whether the emerging Russian weapon is nuclear capable or not, noting only that it would violate an international treaty that prohibits the deployment of nuclear weapons or any other kind of weapon of mass destruction in orbit. Now let's talk about satellite attacks of today's generation. It's the ability to do that kind of vast damage that makes it logical that the Russians would want to put a warhead in space, especially if they see their military and economy weakened after fighting a US-backed Ukraine uh, for about two years now. A space-based weapon that could cripple US communications and the US economy could be an intimidating equalizer. 
and would just be the latest development from both Russia's and China's efforts to weaponize space. In the past few years, China has tested a satellite with a robotic arm that can maneuver to a system, grab it and move it out of orbit. Russia has developed a nesting doll satellite that opens up to reveal a smaller satellite and then that one opens to reveal a projectile capable of destroying nearby satellites. In 2019, the Russians maneuvered a nesting doll near a US satellite. When one of those nesting doll systems parks next to one of US's high value NRO capabilities, they are now holding that asset at risk. This is what the Deputy Chief of Space Operations of the US Space Force said at a 2022 space conference. For your information, NRO is the National Reconnaissance Office. Russia also generated headlines around the world when it conducted a more traditional anti-satellite test in 2021, where it shot down one of its own systems. As with the Starfish test, the impact created a large cloud of orbiting debris that even put the International Space Station at risk for a while. But now there is a new revelation that Russia may be pursuing a nuclear weapon for space and it raises critical questions for Congress and the Defense Department. Do tell us what you think about this video in the comment section and for more news updates, subscribe to India Today.